Minders. Welcome back to another Mind of Watercolor video and another Mind Shot vlog. And today I thought I would just share with you uh, my birthday trip. Actually, my wife um, treated me to a weekend again at Biltmore, one of our favorite places. And my purpose for going was to do a little bit of plein air painting. So I thought I would share some of that trip with you. And as you're watching the images, I just wanted to talk a bit about plein air. I get a lot of questions about, uh, I'm afraid to start. I'm intimidated by starting with plein air. Uh, I don't know what to do. What are the best setups? And the first question you have uh, may be why. And I assume if you're curious or interested, you already know why you want to do plein air. But maybe you're just a little bit afraid. Well, I mean, the reasons for doing plein air can be as varied as people out there. You can just do it just because you want to be outside. It doesn't even have to be an art goal. You don't have to say, oh, I'm going to accomplish this and I'm going to accomplish that. Just going outside and bringing your art with you is, is reason enough. Just recreation, love of the outdoors, fresh air, sunshine, all that good stuff. You know, just take a sketchbook with you and doodle. But yes, of course, plein air can get into other more art-related, more substantial and planned and constructive reasons, too. Painting from life is always beneficial. You'll frequently hear art instructors say that. Draw from life, draw from life, paint from life. Well, I'm not the type that believes that's the only way. I mean, some will go as far as to say that's all you should ever do, but that's impractical. And um, while photos do have drawbacks... It's, it is fine to practice from photos, but being outside doing plein air landscape is just very rewarding. And one of the things you find very quickly when you paint from life is that you see things that you never, ever would have thought of. Colors look different. They look more dynamic. You feel distance. You feel color, warmth, coolness, all of that. You get a real sense of the scene. What you will see on location trumps your imagination for the most part. But your reasons for going out are your own. So we'll go on and assume, yes, I really want to do some plein air drawing or painting. What do I do next? Well, number one, determine your purpose, which is what we were just talking about, whether it's recreation, or if it's, whether it's study. Uh, study is a great goal. You do not have to come away with a finished painting. You can study values, light, color, subjects, you, perhaps your journaling to document something. So, determine your purpose. Second, start simply. Don't be too ambitious, especially if it's your first outing or your first series of outing. Don't take a lot of supplies. Take less. If, if you're uncomfortable or you don't know how comfortable you'll be with your setup, just take a sketchbook and a pencil or a sketchbook and a pencil and a pen. Don't even bring paints. The more you take, the longer it'll take you to set up, get set up and finish. Start small. Don't do large works to begin with. That just adds to the complexity and the time. Stick to simple subjects that you're comfortable with. Next thing is find your spot. I'm a big proponent of scouting for plein air. Now it can just be something that you saw while you're out for a stroll, it can be something you saw at a place you were. Or you could have ideas about where you'd like to paint. Well, when you have a couple of minutes, you know, if it's not far away, just pop on down there and take a look. If you're going on vacation and it's at a distance, that's a little harder to do. Because sometimes you have to grab uh, a sketch or so on the, on the go. But I don't recommend starting that way. I recommend you start with places that are local places that are familiar, and the best place to start is your own yard. It's a great way to do a dry run, and if you don't have a yard, try a friend's yard or a nearby park. Wherever you go, consider people. I've had several people tell me that they don't want to do plein air because they just get bothered all the time. Well, it could be that you're just picking spots that are too busy. So if people bother you, keep that in mind. If you're on a busy street, you're going to have to contend with that. And it's not something that you want to do uh, in your first few times out. If you are in an area that's fairly crowded, try to find an area where you can put your back against a wall or against an area where people are less likely to walk around behind you. 
Also consider city regulations because in some cities, plein air painting is not even allowed. I know it really seems like a shame, but St. Augustine, Florida, for instance, they consider it a form of entertainment. And if you're going to go out and paint plein air, you have to buy an entertainment license. Just ridiculous. Now, this is not the norm. And again, if you're in an area where people are frequenting mainly for rest, relaxation, or just to kind of kick back like a park more than a, a tourist location, you're probably not going to get bothered that much. Most of the time I get bothered very little in a park. In fact, in this video right here, not one person stopped and there were people walking by constantly. I think it's because it was an area where people were just coming to kind of sit or stroll by the lagoon and they just wanted to rest and relax. And I think they assumed that I wanted to do the same. So nobody bothered me. So find your spot. Actually go out there and sit without any painting supplies. Imagine yourself drawing and painting what you would if you had brought supplies. Find the place you would set up. It's just very valuable when you get ready to go to know exactly where you're going and what this environment will be like. Next point is get comfortable. Determine uh, what you're going to do and how comfortable you'll be doing it. Uh, some people don't mind holding things on their lap to draw or paint. Um, for me, I don't like to do that on my left hand. Uh, I injured it back in high school when I played football. And uh, when I turn my wrist certain ways and hold that position, my fingers go numb. So I can't hold a sketchbook in my hand and on my lap with a stationary wrist for very long, so I prefer an easel. So get to know yourself, what you're comfortable with. Again, practicing in a yard or a friend's yard or in a real nearby park is a great way to know. You know, determine what your comfort will need and what you'll have to carry. Carrying a chair is kind of cumbersome, but maybe you'll be very close to the car. And so setting up a chair is as easy as just pulling it out of the back of the car and walking a few steps. On this location, that was exactly the case for my wife. Now, I stood, but she sat nearby and knit. And we were probably 10 yards from our car. you are going to have to go a long distance, so you'll have to consider carrying uh, a chair. Or at the very least, a small little folding camp stool. Not as comfortable, but it may be necessary. And during this session, I found myself wishing that I had brought another chair, just to sit down and rest. Perhaps you're comfortable sitting on the ground. I, when I was in college, that's the way I did plein air. And, you know, I wouldn't do that so much today. I'm not that limber anymore. But get comfortable. A lot of places you go, and this is why scouting is important, going back to that point, uh, there'll be existing benches or picnic tables. So you'll know if you've scouted, you'll know going in that that's uh, something you have access to. Then as you get ready to draw or paint, stay with the familiar. Uh, your first plein air excursion is not a time to try something new. It's not a time to try that new brush or that new paint. It's, it's time to paint or draw with things you're very, very familiar with. Pick subjects that you're comfortable with. I mentioned that before, but if it's in this category of staying with the familiar. If you've never painted or drawn architecture or people or, or you're trying to learn those things, it's probably not the best time to practice that. Architecture and people are less forgiving and they're more difficult and the process takes longer. If you like doing that though and have done it, go for it. Know yourself, stay with the familiar. If it's your first time doing plein air and you want to stick with simple subjects, you know, flowers, simple land masses, vegetation like trees and shrubs, that sort of thing are easier and more forgiving. Crop in on your scene. Keep it simple. Don't take in your whole panoramic scene in front of you. Pick a little section of it. Do a bit of a vignette in your sketchbook. Just cuts down on the number of decisions and things you have to consider. Next, get down to the basics of your subject. It's not necessary to finish, number one. Number two, simplify. Leave out details. Render the larger, broader shapes, values. Leave the details out or leave them till last. If you find yourself with plenty of time and you've been able to get the entire scene blocked in, then you can proceed to the details. Get your broader shapes, your broader values, your broader composition down, then funnel down to the details as you go, and if need be, you can finish at home. Just give yourself a start. Don't panic if you feel like your time is running out, or you really just don't think you can finish. And next, take a picture. 
taking a picture is pretty much the first thing you should do once you're set up, have decided on your scene, you know what your subject's going to be, and you're satisfied with the light. Take a picture. Because that light is surely going to change within 20 to 30 minutes. Then if you find yourself finishing the piece at home, and for me, I almost always finish it at home, or at least do some refining and details. Uh, I'm always glad I had a picture. Always. So I always take a picture. Usually within the first 10-15 minutes of setting up. And lastly, follow the examples of others for setup and what to bring. There are lots of great options. I will put the link to a couple of my own videos. Uh, but go to Experience Plein Air Sketch Artists. Tio Yuchi's channel. Excellent for that. He's had years of experience doing sketching on location, urban sketching. He's traveled, and he has a lot of great videos on what he brings, what he uses, and how he sets up. And I will include a link to his channel below. Another good one is Following the White Rabbit. This lady is very experienced, also a world traveler, has a really nice, quick, light, easy-to-carry setup. And I think you'll find some good tips for her. But just do a general search on YouTube. I think you'll find several ideas. From the most complex setup to the very simple. Thanks everyone. I hope this helps. So if you enjoyed this and I hope you have some ideas. Um, and are less intimidated by jumping into plein air. And get out those supplies. Give it a try. See you in the next video. Bye bye.